So we're preparing to leave as soon as possible, and one of the things we need to do, the biggest thing we need to do, is provision. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. We did one trip of provisioning today, got a whole bunch of pasta, and now I have to put it all in mason jars to get rid of this pesky plastic. How to hoist yourself up a mass. I need help. So to hoist yourself up, you need a couple pieces of equipment. I use these blocks. I have a double up there and a single down here, right here with me. And that creates a nice purchase system, which lets me pull myself up on this one line. So I pull here and it'll take me up. Now I use an ascender as a uh, safety. So if I let go, you know, the line doesn't just fall away, but you can just grab this and that'll stop it and then, you know, you don't crash to your deck. Now, I have two ascenders on this. Here's the other one, and the other one hooks onto a static halyard. That way, if I fall, I don't go too far. You wanna have uh, something kind of elastic, so this is nylon, it has some stretch, because otherwise, if you fall on this thing and it's holding you, you're gonna hurt yourself. You can either A, hoist yourself up with this setup, or you can have someone at the bottom pulling on it and you think you're hoisting yourself up and then you save your arms for when you actually get up there to start working. Just making sure the legs have enough spread in them so that way they don't fall out. Just make sure it's done well. Oh, fun fact birds they ate the wires that's why our spreader lights have never worked because birds so my little safety line here that goes around the mast its purpose is that if there's a wake which there's not gonna be a wake in here but if the boat swings I would then swing away from the mast which isn't a big deal but then I would swing back into the mast and that would hurt this is where our check stays attached to the mast and right here is the stop so that our trisole doesn't go up and, you know, slide off. Okay, so all the stays are good. <sighs> it's time to look and, you know, take in the view because Maddie worked hard to get me this high up in the air. And then we'll come down. Mad, do you want to wave? Bless you. Okay, you might be in that. I am down from the mast, I am now clean, and we're gonna go get some ramen because Maddie just finished editing a video from another channel that we're starting called the Charm City Chewers. So you guys should check them out. And I need the keys. And on that video, there's a lot of ramen and we really got craving ramen. It's a new day and we're going to get some lunch at Casbar and then we're gonna get back to work. Probably bring some bags with us so that we can provision a small bit on our way back. Cause that's how we're doing it this time around. We're just kind of provisioning with uh, trips since the supermarket is unfortunately about a mile away. <laughs> we are going to a fondue night tonight in the marina with some friends. So I'm currently baking some bread right here. It's uh, rising. And while all this is happening, we're gonna go get some breakfast at a pancake house because we miss pancakes. Pancakes! Look at these beautiful pancakes. I'm so excited. Mmm. Tastes like home. That was delicious! And now we're going to continue to provision, making another stop at the grocery store before heading back to the boat.
are a few reasons why doing this is so important, especially before a very long passage. It, the biggest thing it does is eliminate plastic waste. So yes, we're adding more plastic to the equation, but this way we don't have to throw away a whole bunch of very large plastic containers at sea. We would never throw them into the ocean, but uh, it does add up. Your trash adds up very quickly when you're out there. One of the worst things about taking meat when you're in the ocean out of plastic is the smell later on. So what we actually do is we're able to discard these in a very small <laughs> way. So we can just crunch them up, roll them up really tight, and then put them into a glass mayonnaise jar, which then shuts with a lid. So the smell is not bothersome. Then when we get to shore, we can dispose of everything properly. The meats that we got are pretty much beef and chicken. We got one thing of lamb. We've learned that we can actually use Ziploc bags as vacuum packed bags. So that is excellent news to us. And luckily we got this food saver vacuum packer uh, back in the US a while, a while ago and we used it on our way across the Atlantic the first time. It worked really well. So we're excited to do it again this time around. We didn't have food saver bags, but instead we used Ziploc bags that we literally just cut the top off. And then to make it still work to like suck the air out, we took pieces of this and kind of stuck them in like a little air pipe pretty much. And then it just melts the whole thing together and it is sealed. So this was a much less expensive than food saver bag option for running a food saver machine. And more importantly, in Gibraltar, where there is no food saver bag, we're able to vacuum pack our meats. So now we're gonna pack them all into the freezer. And it's really important when we pack them in that we decide how we want to be eating the food because we have chicken and beef and a little bit of lamb. And when we put them in, they're gonna freeze into a solid block. So that means we can't rummage through to pick what we wanna eat tonight. So, this has to be my most beautiful loaf ever. And it's great because you haven't made bread in so long. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Oh, right, we're just gonna listen to that. We're heading over to our friend Jordan's boat for dinner and we're bringing broccoli salad. And I think we're gonna be having fondue, which I'm really excited about. Herbie made some fresh bread specifically for the fondue. And so uh, it's gonna be a really good time. All right, this is, is this is Jordan, our chef of the night. Making the biggest cheese fondue I've ever made in my entire life. Oh my gosh, have you made fondue before? I make fondue like every week. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's a lot of cheese, man. <laughs> And we are in there, halibut grassy. Is it fluffy? Is it baked all the way through? <laughs> it nice. is. Oh, oh my gosh, like it real looks really bread. good. Cool. <laughs> you made that. Yes, this is my child. <laughs> my bread child. Good. <laughs> oh my gosh. We got these really nifty sail bags from Harkin. Maddie actually got them for me for Christmas and it's August that I'm installing them. And they come with these really cool, super easy to use self-tapping screws, which would be awesome 
except that they are designed for modern boats that have much thinner hulls. So you can see the self-tapping part and then the threaded part. And you're supposed to go through your whole skin in the drill with the self-tapping part. And then when you finally get to the threads, it just screws in. The problem we had is our hull in the cockpit is actually thicker than the screw is. A little, uh, a little setback in the easy installation, but it's getting there. We came back to Pancake Factory because it was so good yesterday. And this time we tried uh, the European pancake or the crepe. And it looks really good. One of the big things that anyone should do in preparation for an ocean crossing is make sure they're up to date on all of their antibiotics and first aid. So the other day we went through our antibiotics and saw that a lot of them were expired. So we went and got some new ones and these are the ones that we got. I'm a dentist, so treating infections is like commonplace. So my antibiotics and my painkillers, I know those through and through. We have amoxicillin, then we have erythromycin, and then if those don't work, we have clindamycin, we also have ZPAC, which is azithromycin, and then one that's not a isin, we have metronidazole, which is for gram-negative bacteria. It's important not to carry anything unless you know how to how and when to use it. So we're aware of how to use all of these, but we also have a lot of other first aid things. And if you want to see a full list of everything that we carry for health and emergencies, go check out our floating pharmacy episode. The link is in the description of this video, and it's a really good layout of every single thing that we carry in case of emergency. We're going to get a tour now of the World War II caves that are all through the Rock of Gibraltar. So there were 16 miles of tunnel before the World War II, and then afterwards, now still, there are 35 miles, 34 miles of tunnel.
This was drilled out further during World War II as an air raid shelter. And the stanchions you can see on the side wall is where the benching would have been for seating. Mm -hmm. That's the only original benching left is that little section just there. Back to approximately there. Another wall across and that slab you can see is the morgue. When anaesthetics given prior to operations, then patients are monitored before being put back out onto the wall. So we've got the white tiled walls, the red tiled floor, all on a slight angle downwards for ease of swimming out and cleaning towards the main wall. Mm. Air filtration through both walls and through the main part of the hospital. This is the operating theatre. This is the operating room. We're in a hospital right now, converted from a bomb room. shelter. Two operating tables in here. And behind each table, one. <laughs> That's proper Victorian brickwork. That is the fume extractor for the cannon that never went there because by the time they were finished building the area, the cannons meant to be there were uh, obsolete. <laughs> That was really neat. We got a tour through the World War II tunnels, but what I didn't realize is that they're not just World War II tunnels. We also went to some Victorian era tunnels and... Pretty much as long as there's been people on this rock, there's been people making holes in this rock. <laughs> it was very, very cool. August 18th, 19th, 19th and uh, we are heading out. We're casting off uh, from Gibraltar and our next stop is Madeira. It's going to be about nine days to get there. Next stop, Atlantic Ocean. We're going to be kind of doing the first leg of our crossing of the Atlantic Ocean. It's extra exciting because it's our second time crossing. We crossed to get over here and now we're crossing back to the Americas, but first the Caribbean. I do not like sailing near shores when they're covered in fog. Pretty much the only thing that happened during my watch is I caught a giant bug in a cup. It's time for Wendy to show her true colors. Yes, her other color, which is blue. So the shrouds that broke in our case are the cap shroud and our aft lower shroud. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.